If you are developing for IoT Edge devices or don't know what it takes to develop for IoT Edge devices, you will want to watch this episode of the IoT Show with Koshi as he will demo latest and greatest in tooling for IoT Edge. Uh, you will see how to leverage dev containers, get up code spaces, how to switch from one version of an, or another of the runtime and more. So that's today on the IoT Show. Hi, everyone. This is the IoT Show. Thanks for watching. I'm Olivier, your host. Today, we are talking tooling. And more specifically, we'll be talking tooling for Azure IoT Edge developers. And for that, I have Koishi with me today. Hey, Koishi, how are you? I'm doing good. Thank you very much for having me. Well, thanks for your time. Thanks for coming here to the show to show and expose and present everything that the Azure IoT Edge team is developing for developers. Before we jump into the actual meat of this episode, how about you introduce yourself and you tell us a bit more about what your team is doing? Sure, yeah. So again, hi everybody. Uh, my name is Koichi Hiro. I'm a program manager in Azure IoT platform and device groups, working on Azure IoT Edge developer tools and experience. I've been with Microsoft for 15 plus years. Uh, my last uh, gig work before working on this effort uh, was driving IoT device certification program policies. Awesome, great program, love that one too. And actually you came yeah. on the IoT show to talk about this one in the past. So if people yeah, didn't have a chance to learn about it, they can go check out that older episode. But yes. so today we're going to talk about Azure IoT Edge development. Can you, before talking about the tools themselves, give us you know, a high level overview, especially for developers who are not familiar with Azure IoT Edge. Can you give us a little, a little bit of a description of what IoT Edge is about from the developer standpoint? What are the things that developers need to understand and know about IoT Edge before getting their feet wet? So uh, Azure IoT Edge is a software component that um, our team, uh, our, our sister team has built to basically enable cloud workloads to run on the specific uh, devices on premise. Uh, to build, uh, to run any, let's say, AI models, any of the functionality, uh, developers need to build what is called Azure IoT Edge module or custom edge module and that can be deployed and managed, uh, which is a, uh, which is running a containerized environment. Uh, so talk about uh, Azure IoT Edge developer journey. I think you need first need to set up your dev environment, whether it's in, uh, using IDE for Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code, uh, and then install those extensions to start with. Uh, we have uh, support, we have all of the tooling to support host operating system like Windows. Linux and Mac OS. Uh, we can also have a simulation tools to basically integrate with IDEs to simulate IoT Edge functionalities. Um, along with this uh, getting started experience, I think developer would also want to start you know, installing and configuring IoT Edge, whether it's uh, integration with IoT Hub or IoT Central, which are both uh, Microsoft offerings or even third party offerings uh, services. So uh, the installation of, um, and configuration is another step that goes through for our developer journey. Um, and also don't forget uh, choosing the right program language, right? To de de develop a uh, custom module, whether it's in C, C Sharp, Java, Python, and Node, you can choose uh, whatever the program language of your choice. And we have a VS Code that supports five languages, all of the five languages, as well as a Visual Studio that supports C and C Sharp to build with. So that's more about develop, uh, building a dev environment and also com installing configuration IoT Edge. Um, once you've done that, uh, you can be, uh, you as a developer can start like hello world type of experience using our IDE. We have a uh, solution template that comes with uh, deployment manifest templates, all this uh, guided navigation for you to get started with uh, writing a code uh, based on the hello world uh, sample modules. Yeah, yeah. And so we'll, we'll look at that at a high level um, when, when you walk through some of that experience, especially the, the latest and greatest uh, in the toolbox that you delivered. Uh, so basically setting up a dev box, could be Mac, Windows, Linux, uh, to create these models as well as 
work and configure um, a device that will be running the right. runtime itself can be hosted by Windows or Linux uh, to orchestrate the various modules slash containers to be to be um, to be deployed. So, lots of things going on here. Um, what is it that your team is delivering in terms of toolings? You mentioned VS Code extension. You mentioned this kind of things, but let's look at a list of the big buckets, the big toolings that you're delivering to help developers on all these platforms targeting all these different types of edge devices. Yeah, I have a table in the slide that I can share with you uh, to go with. Uh, so uh, this table, uh, the current, which basically lists out the current lineup, and we have a new tooling also called, uh, called IoT Edge Configuration Tool that joins the family of uh, uh, the tool set that we offer. Uh, our two offerings uh, enhances developer experiences in both inner loop as well as the outer loop, uh, and all of the tooling is available in the GitHub with an open source uh, code. Uh, first, uh, let me start with the IDE extension, the first two rows. Uh, we have a VS Code uh, extension, uh, as well as a Visual Studio extension. Uh, like I mentioned, uh, uh, v Visual Studio Code, it supports all of the five languages that I mentioned earlier. And Visual Studio, which supports uh, Visual Studio 2017 and 2019, supports C and C Sharp, respectively. Um, and next, uh, we have uh, IoT Edge Simulator, uh, which provides a local development experience via simulation to create, develop, uh, test, and debug IoT Edge module. There's no need to push uh, Edge module to Azure Container Registry or any of the container registry of your choice. So it, it does reduce the hop between the uh, pushing the de development uh, from a dev box over to uh, the container registry on the cloud. Uh, the next one is called IoT Edge Dev Tool. Uh, this is the tool that greatly simplifies IoT Edge development down to a simple uh, commands driven by the environment variables. What it does is it's going to uh, create an IoT hub, uh, creating a device identity for the edge. Uh, it will provision that device and it can even simulate so into one command. So the beauty of this tool is that because it's a, a one line command, uh, it can be used as in uh, your inner loop uh, to build the test and debug as well as your outer loop in, the, in running a CI CD. So imagine you were CD, in your CI CD task, you wanted to stream in all of the uh, pro tasks about creation of a hub and you know, devices, it's device ID, et cetera. This tool does everything for you. And I also, this tool uh, runs CLI under the hood. So it, it, everything is streamlined, including the running, including running the Azure CLI extension as well. So that, that's, yeah. Yeah, I remember I was just, um, I remember actually John Gallant came to the yeah. IoT show to introduce that tool like maybe two years ago. I'm so glad to see that the tool has been integrated into the toolbox and is now part of the mainstream tooling that we deliver for developers. Yeah, yeah. So we do spend a lot of cycles uh, about enhancing these tools and I will get to that uh, later in the later slide as well. Yeah. And uh, last but not least for the existing uh, offerings, we have a CICD task in running in Azure DevOps pipeline that can be used to build and push and deploy Edge module seamlessly. And uh, last but not least, uh, this is a new tool that just joined the family, as I mentioned. Uh, it's a new tool to uh, automate installation and configuration of IoT Edge. And it can streamline uh, that processes seamlessly without having to do uh, manual steps. So okay. that's the current offering. Nice. Uh, it's pretty complete. It goes all the way from your actual IDEs for developing the modules, managing your IoT Edge devices, and so on, all the mm -hmm. way down to the actual uh, setup of the runtime, love that. So let's jump into it. So that seems to be some tools plus extensions, plus command lines to install and so on. Seems to be a lot, but I understand that in the era of GitHub code spaces that you guys took advantage of these new developer technologies uh, for helping developers having a seamless experience when setting up their dev box. So let's look at that experience uh, for setting up your environment. Okay, so yeah, thank you, Olivia. So in general, dev developer container lets you build a Docker container 
uh, as a full feature develop development environment. Uh, so what we have done is taken advantage of these features that is available, and then we can uh, we can wrap uh, we are building two uh, different values to by creating a dev container. One is uh, wrapping all the dependencies uh, in the component, whether it's installing Python, whether it's installing Docker Compose, etc. Also, all the dependencies are to run this tool, uh, IoT Edge Dev Tool, is packed into one dev container package. Uh, the other value uh, that we bring to the table is that the secure development environment. By writing these uh, uh, code in the dev container environment that provides a secure dev environment that is out, that is not running on the local host. So that's the two values that we uh, provided. So if you look at the some of the uh, dev container work that we have done for uh, IoT Edge Dev in this page, uh, you can see that there are specific versions that we have created. Um, and you can see a bunch of uh, uh, commands that run in this particular sequence to help set up the uh, right packages in order. Um, the other beauty of that is that uh, because we create a dev container, it can seamlessly integrate with the uh, uh, GitHub code spaces, which is available as a GNL, uh, that you can invoke a GitHub code spaces as a new code space, and then you can start building your cloud IDE using code spaces with these dev container packages uh, applied. So that's the first one. Uh, the other uh, demo using the local IDE, which is in this case Visual uh, Studio Code, is that uh, we also make this dev container available as part of the IoT Edge extension. So if you are new to uh, building an IoT Edge module using VS Code, what you can do is you can start creating a new solution. And as part of the solution template, uh, all of the dev container has been already applied. So let's say uh, I'm going to just in IoT show two. Uh, just for... I'm creating a new project here. I'm just gonna go ahead and skip everything. I'm gonna go pick C sharp, sample module, everything just uh, default. So it will start creating a new uh, project for you. This is just a... At yeah. this point you installed VS Code, the extension for ITH development, and that's it, right? You didn't have to mess around with all the rest. The dev, cont dev container will take care of giving you an environment that has all you need to develop and simulate and work with the IT Edge uh, device uh, on the other side. Right. So, like, yes. Uh, so, the dev container will be part of this uh, new solution creation. Um, mm -hmm. And also, dev container, you can also add a dev container package to your existing solution uh, using Visual Studio Code as well. So, either you create a new solution or you can add an existing solution. So, um, I am going to stop here because this demo uh, is going to take probably 10 more minutes because uh, as, you, as I mentioned, dev container has a lot of commands in, uh, in mm -hmm. running in se right sequences. So I'm going to basically skip over. Um, as you can see, you start running all those uh, you know uh, commands in to run the dev container yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in the background. Uh, I have instead I have a pre-populated uh, environment that I can share with you which is this one over here. So as you can see, uh, I have a um, C-sharp project for building the Edge module. It's already running a dev container. Uh, so as I mentioned, dev container run, does not run in the whole source. It runs on this container itself. So what you can see uh, is that let me actually build, share a command line here, is that I have a, com oops, sorry. I have a command line here, and I type Docker to list out the Docker images running on the host. So as you can see, uh, there's nothing running on the host computer, but in this container, I can do, I can type the same command, and you can, And you should be able to see that simulation or Edge module or Edge runtime itself, as you can see, uh, 
it's running on the container, not on the local host. So uh, what I mean, what this tells you here is that these uh, modules are run in the con uh, remote container and that provides a secure dev environment that you can basically play around, start coding, start debugging in the secure dev, dev environment. Nice, nice, love it. Yeah. Packages and then gives you that security, uh, that added security on top of it. Great, so you've yes. set up your dev environment. Um, usually, you know, you, you did do that scaffolding and that first custom module. The next step usually is to set up your device, your target, right? Whether it's a simulator, a container, or um, an actual real device. And for that, it used to be something where you had to install Mobi and then bring the runtime and then do a bunch of things manually. It seems like you guys have a new tool that makes all that way easier for developers to, um, to basically set up their devices for IoT Edge. Yes, yeah. So let me show you again. Um, let me go back to the slide to talk about some of the updates we have made. And thank you for bringing that up. Uh, it is called uh, Azure IoT Edge Configuration Tool. Uh, based on the customer feedback, uh, we've heard that the customers are struggling to install and uh, configure IoT Edge, especially the configuration part is pretty difficult. Installation, yes, there's a manual steps to install Mobi first in Edge runtime, but configuring whether it's using a uh, Config YAML for the older version of IoT Edge or Config Tomo for the latest version of Edge Runtime. Uh, that has been uh, pretty uh, uh, difficult to configure with, especially for uh, the OT, the operator person who in um, and the different location to the uh, there's a skill gaps in, uh, among the OT person and the configuration of these two, uh, IoT Edge has been the problem. Uh, it's, it's been the main problem. So, so this really blocks a scalable IoT Edge-based solution deployment. Um, so we, we build this, this tool to basically streamline this process of installation and configuration. Okay. Uh, it's in a preview. Uh, it is a command line tool that can be integrated into the BAS script or uh, the IT automation tools. Um, and it supports a DPS provisioning currently. Okay. Okay, well, we yeah. want to see it in action, man. Let's yeah, do it. yeah, happy to, yes. Is it is it both for Linux and Windows hosts? Doesn't matter? Um, it, it is, uh, it, it doesn't really matter because it's the bash script anyway, so it, you can run in the Linux or you can run in a WSL, or okay. you can run in okay. Windows host, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, let's bring in action. Let me... I like this WSL think is it makes developers life easier. They don't have to wonder about Linux versus Windows. They can be on a Windows host, leverage WSL to run these Linux, these bash scripts as well. So that's that's brilliant. All right, so uh, to demo IoT Edge Config, I just created um, IoT Central app. Uh, it's called Edge Config Demo. Uh, so let me create, start with uh, creating a device entity for IoT Central. So I'm gonna basically create a device entity, I'll just call IoT show. Uh, I'll just leave the default as is, uh, I'll create a device. So as you can see, the device status in IoT Central is registered. So it, it means that the device has not been uh, properly provisioned just yet with IoT Central. So what I'm gonna do is basically, I'm gonna get information for the device, for example. I need, because this is a uh, provision through a DPS, I need to get a scope ID, yeah. right? And I need to get a registration ID, which is the device ID in this case. And I need to get a, this is a SAS key attestation. So I'm gonna get the SAS key here. So let me share with the terminal console here. So what this what this does is that uh, this is the script, uh, this is the command to retrieve mm -hmm. the, our configuration tool, and it you just need to parse the parameters here. Right. And you got, you actually got it directly from GitHub. Okay, wget got the installer, and then mm -hmm. uh, set the the the, the permissions 
locally so that it can run in pseudo mode, I guess, right? And then just, just run it, okay? So yeah, so let me explain that. So I have a Raspberry Pi uh, mm -hmm. that I uh, SSD into. So I'm already on the Raspberry Pi console here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and actually, and it does not, it's a, it's a vanilla uh, environment, so it does not have IoT Edge runtime uh, installed. Um, as you mentioned, uh, yes, uh, we will use WD get to basically download the script first, uh, mm -hmm. and then we change the uh, permissions, yep. and then we just uh, run the script uh, with the parameters. The parameter being, this is the ID scope, this is mm -hmm. the registration key, and that's the SAS key. So one command, I will just, Press enter, it will start configuring them. Okay. Yep. So while it's doing it, tell me a bit more about what is it doing? So the, the device was fresh running, you know, Debian or, or Linux on, on that Raspberry Pi. Uh, so what is it bringing in and what's happening right now? Yeah, uh, first uh, this script will check the operating system for the host operating system to make sure that the operating system is properly supported by the Edge runtime. Uh, okay. You can see the supported operating system in the Azure doc. And then second, it will uh, fetch all of the uh, necessary components, whether it's a Mobi or Edge runtime itself, uh, and it will be uh, downloaded and installed. Uh, you can see uh, it's currently installing uh, Mobi uh, components uh, right now. Yeah which will certainly be one of the biggest part there. How, lo how long does it usually take for the whole script to run there? Uh, it will be less than a few minutes. I will say two, okay. three minutes, depending on your, obviously the bandwidth as well as the, uh, your uh, host power of that certain devices. But uh, on average, it should take less than a few minutes. So the script has been completed. Uh, as you can see, uh, here's completed installation of Mobi, uh, the edge runtime and configure them uh, to IoT Central. So if you go back and look at the IoT Central, remember the status mm -hmm. of the device being registered? Now you can see the status being changed to provision. So within a few minutes, uh, you can install and configure uh, your device and turn your device into IoT Edge capable devices. Nice. And I would assume that the script, if the device doesn't comply with the requirements that you have for running IoT at runtime, will get some sort of a report on you know what's wrong and what's required to to have uh, on that image in order to run IoT at runtime. Um, so yeah, brilliant. Love it. Makes makes deploying IoT Edge on a device way easier. I can see that you know mm -hmm. for production needs as well as developers, where you can script mm -hmm. the whole thing. And have these devices ready in in uh, in super fast. Actually, okay. Mm -hmm. There is one more thing, which is we just talked about setting up an environment. Um, and I know one of the pains for developers in general uh, is to keep track and keep up with you know how fast we are updating versions and runtimes and so on. But in reality, especially when you go to production, you want to fix versions of software. You don't want that to change every other day or every other night, right? So IoT Edge devices are no exception. You sometimes need to freeze a version and say, I'm going to go to production with that long-term support version of the runtime. Uh, and, uh, and so as a developer, you need to pay attention to the versions, right, of the runtimes. And I hear that there are new, new ways that you can do that in the tooling um, these days. Yeah, so uh, in our toolings, we have offered uh, developers to select uh, multiple version of uh, IoT Edge runtime to simulate with. Um, so we give it an option. Currently, we have a default to 1.2, but we, we can uh, developer can choose to simulate 1.0 or 1.1. Whatever that is, obviously, for various reasons, whether it's uh, debugging, making sure your custom edge modules work with various uh, versions. Uh, so let me show you how to do that. Okay. So back into the dev container environment that I have just shown you pre prior pre previously. So let me set up a, a dev uh, simulation environment first, and then we can go from there. So as you can see, uh, you can we have successfully set up a simulator to be run. Um, mm -hmm. And then in the from the command palette, you can choose the set default version runtime version. So um, going back to deployment manifest template that we have, you can see right now uh, in the manifest, you can see that uh, we are currently, our image is pointing to 1.2 version of IoT Edge runtime for both uh, Edge Agent and Edge Hub. Um, 
So if you want to, let's say, change that to 1.1, you want to simulate uh, 1.1 uh, edge runtime, what you need to do is set default and choose 1.1. You can see immediately that the deployment man has, manifest has changed uh, its image to 1.1 uh, for edge, uh, edge hub and edge agent. What you need to do is right click, build and run solution in the simulator which gonna take, I was think it's less than a few minutes. So now uh, the simulator has uh, been running and as you can see, it starts sending the telemetry, the temp simulator temperature sensor. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back up a little bit. And as you can see, it's simulating IoT Edge, but I wanna take a, uh, I want you to look at the, this version number, uh, the version 1.1, 1 .1. This, mm -hmm. this reflects the, this reflects the specific version of the Edge runtime. It means that the, it's running Edge version uh, 1.1.5 uh, in the simulated environment. So you can basically simulate that. And obviously you can do it with 1.0 or you can do it with 1.2 as well. So it provides a lot of choice. Yeah. Brilliant. No, that's, that's brilliant. That definitely makes developers' life way easier when they have to deal with different versions, potentially in an infrastructure that is, you know, in real life, that's what happens. So, yeah. well, Koishi, thanks a lot for bringing up all these new updates. Um, there is one link that uh, you need to go to when it comes to getting started with IoT Edge development, and that's the one that we're showing below here, aka.ms slash IoT show slash getting started with IoT Edge dev. Koishi, thanks a lot for that overview of the dev toolbox for IoT Edge developers. I hope to see you soon again on the IoT show for more. Um, enjoyable demonstrations of tooling for IoTH devs. Uh, thanks, Koishi, a lot for your time again. Yeah, thank you very much. We should definitely do more. And thank you very much for having me. Everyone, thanks for watching. See you soon on the IoT Show. Bye.